Okay, this lesson for the Corne Project class first asserts the fact that if this were a Bible quiz, uh, no one could answer it. First of all, because we aren't trained to look at that which isn't presented, as if we might think that when we're presented options, uh, we often find ourselves gladly uh, through conditioning, habituation, tradition, uh, picking one of the options. For example, um, in this uh, quote here, it says, talent hits a target no one else can hit, and that's called accuracy. Genius hits a target no one else can see, and it says geniuses can make connections others cannot even conceive of. So speaking of the historic holistic hermeneutic, the genius of Dr. John Penn, for example, is not Dr. John Penn, but the process. And in holism, for example, holism, how historical, historic, or historical holistic hermeneutics helps hit unseen targets, that is because he invested in the process. And by developing a hermeneutic that is inclusive, for example, um, syntax, grammar, etymology, inflectional morphemes, who would have thought those would become so important and so significant, but for bringing it all together to see how it dissolves embarrassing difficulty. So for example, we are presented something, let's say the young and old, young versus old earth. Well, we know in Hebrew, that language is somewhat like equations in chemistry. And you have a formula and you have symbols and you have letters and numbers like H2O. Well, in Hebrew, we have letters and numbers. So when someone says young and someone says old, as a research assistant for Dr. John Penn and working in collaboration with Dr. Eddie Johnson, when he hears words like young and old, he says, first, we need to define those terms. And then second, those are numbers. And if they're numbers, if young is a number and old is a number, what are they? So when we looked at those numbers and how far apart they were, uh, he made the observation, astute observation that is, training and teaching and laboring for over 40 years or approximately 40 years as a professor in hermeneutics and then pastoring even longer. So he made the observation there was a formula there and then reminded us of something very elementary, a ratio. And again, that's why if this were a test, no one could pass it because no one's ever asked the question. No one's ever asked the question. So presented young versus old. And remember, like Calvinism and Arminianism, for example, people who were Arminians like a Dr. Michael Brown or who was once a Calvinist like a Dr. Michael Brown is now an Arminian a person who was once a Calvinist like Dr. Leighton Flowers has, instead of going over to uh, Arminianism, he has developed his own uh, construct called provisionism and is laboring to stay and adhere as closely to the text as possible and not rely upon one of the established historic uh, constructs such as Calvin, Luther, Arminus, Molina, or Pelagius. So he's just abandoned it, scrapped it all, which in education, that's what you do. You stop. Sometimes you just cast away all constructs, deconstruct them or just ignore them and start from scratch. And he's done an extraordinary job because he's garnered the attention of quite a few people. So in this case, what would we do since in historical holistic approach, we take a full scope perspective, which teaches us to see both the trees and the forest. So if we define the term young as a number, as we were told, as Dr. Penn astutely reminded us, Hebrew is a, a letter is a number, it's a picture, and it's a sound. Well, there was a range of six to 20,000 year as far as the young position, and that was, of course, chronological. And those of you that have been in this class, you notice chronos, chronological. Well, this is left here with that disturbing very upsetting to a lot of people or many people out there who now have, um, if you will, uh, eisegetically interposed a 
tension and contradiction, which is very normal for us. If we're only looking at what's presented, we will uh, use, as we were trained years ago in consulting, that if all you have is a hammer, everything you see will look like a nail and you'll try to solve it with the hammer. And that's just the way we're wired. So this was uh, 4.5 billion, this number was given to us, the geological, and that was uh, 4.5 billion. Again, why this could not be answered if it were a Bible quiz is because first, no one would ever ask. Because if we took this from the board and ask, uh, go from Genesis to Revelation, the way we were taught in systematic theology, and incorporate the numbers and use the data that the Bible has given us, how would you then approach this as a, an assignment? It was never given to us as a problem. I suppose that had we been presented things in the um, perspective of a problem, we probably would have given up and suffered from futility and been so futilized. Suppose, assuming it's a problem, uh, we would have found it perhaps difficult. But being encouraged to do evaluation, ever evaluating, never negating, we went ahead and approached the problem. Uh, so we noticed the difference here was 14,000 years. 14,000 years, the difference here. So we had a delta 14,000 between this number. So starting with uh, the lowest number, 6,000 going to seven, just took half of that, 7,000. We decided to start in increments of 6,000, go 250, and plug that into the formula that Dr. Penn insisted was in the Bible. Well, he sent us to the work, and we went and retrieved the data. Remember, unless you're practicing this holism, this full-scope perspective, and incorporating number, letter, word, sound, definition... This is just something where you'll see people who are not only divided between themselves, but they are divided. Individuals still struggle between these two, somewhat like you see in Calvinism and Arminianism. There are features in both those constructs that create a great deal of tension for each person because if you go anti one or the other too far, you begin to speak in ways that are so off script you're just trying to win an argument or you're trying to negate a construct, not necessarily evaluate a text. Well, Dr. Penn reminded us that Jesus said there's 12 hours in the day. And Jesus said that, so we don't have any reason to question what he said. He's the creator. He's the one in whom the fullness of the God had dwelt bodily. So if he said there's 12 hours in the day, I would assure you that would be the most accurate data we could go. So... Then the, it was recommended as we would take this data back, present it to our professor. Well, then if we double this 12 hours night, there we have our 24 hours. And that includes day and night. So that's it total. Then we go here, we have 12,500. That falls within that range of those who assert young. So really, it's impossible. that this, If this were a Bible quiz, it would be impossible for anyone to answer it apart from applying historical, holistic hermeneutics. And that's just for us in this class. We've already seen what it looks like when we incorporate all the data. For example, 80 years from 1948, the regathering of Israel is 2028. Well, Usher said 1996 was when the world would end. We have 2028 is 80 years from 1948, but we also have 2060 by Isaac Newton, the mathematical mathematician and theologian, and he said 2060. But we notice as we were taught in the holistic approach by Dr. John Penn that the margin of difference between uh, 2028 and 1996 is 32 years, and the margin of difference, the delta, between 2028 and 2060 is also 32. And studying with this type of approach, 
we learned what we otherwise couldn't have known, that 32 AD, April 6th, is when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So we noticed that by being able to take a holistic approach when we're given, let's say, a portion, uh, partial data, we can then build in by attaching and correlating the data that's otherwise out there. So that now we had this that worked out. Again, if this were a Bible quiz, no one could answer it because we're trained, typically, the masses are trained to just go and find text to support this or to support that. And of course, we find people have in history, since this is a novel controversy, less than 50 years old, when it re-emerged or emerged and was very uh, popularized, similar to the Left Behind series had become popularized, similar to R.C. Sproul saying, regeneration precedes faith, that became very popular. And very few people stopped to ask, is that faith a noun? Is it a verb? Is regeneration a process? If it is, through what? Well, it's through the gospel. And of course, we are reminded now the New Testament distinguishes between believe, the simple form of action, and believing. And that participle believing is also a noun. So as Dr. Penn would say, we have to account for that dot, that simple form of action. And until faith comes to the unbeliever, they won't believe in the whole purpose of John's gospel to be written is so that faith would come to the hearer, to the reader, to the listener, and they would believe and could believe, you see. And then when faith comes, they would believe. So it's could believe, meaning it conveys faith, persuades them. So they could believe and would be persuaded, John 20, 31. It's remarkable. But look at the insights you have. And if it were a test, no one could pass it. So back to what we're doing now, we had been reminded of the ratio. We had the one day to a thousand years and then 1,000 years to one day. And what's uh, fascinating about it is we have not found historical holistic hermeneutics as developed and applied uh, by Dr. John Penn to fail to prevail in every, anything we've evaluated thus far. So there's a lot of work to do to take something that took so long to develop and then even longer for students like myself to acquire some aptitude, a degree of aptitude. Now, Dr. Eddie Johnson so far ahead of me that I don't have enough lifetime remaining to close that gap, but it's okay. We can enjoy what we're learning. We can study it. So we noticed this and Dr. Penn having a, uh, several degrees and especially um, in all the different fields. Uh, he reminded us of third grade arithmetic, the inverse relationship to division is multiplication. So we just simply took 12,500 years. That's the chronological number. And we multiplied it so we have 360 days. So there's our one day, our day column. If we need to do that, that helps. Some of you may not have seen the videos, but we have one video, Rationale for Young Earth Creationism. So we have times 360 days, and that equaled 4.5 million days. And then we went over here to the thousand year column so we want to now go from days to years. So times a thousand years, we just added three zeros to a million and changed the unit of measure. So that gave us four point, well, let me just put the multiplication sign there, times, it gave us 4.5 billion years. And what was remarkable is when we went this direction, thousand years is to a day, we took the 4.5 times 1,000 days, changing that to 1,000 days, but 1,000 days equals approximately 2.78. Now, we're just using integers, whole numbers, nothing detailed here. Seven, eight years at 360 because we first tried it at 365. Dr. Penn sent us back saying there's no such thing in the Bible. It's 360 days. So the 2.78 years 
we multiplied the 4.5 times the 2.78, and that gave us the 12.5 billion. And it was as easy to explain as the uh, Euler. Euler, I, I called him Euler because it was E-U-L-E-R, but it's correct pronunciation according to some computer that told me how to pronounce it. Euler's number, E equals 2.71828, yeah, 1828 something. So you can see that just using whole numbers, and that's, that's a number that's uh, self-evident when it comes to compounded interest. And I won't write that up there, but isn't it interesting how uh, this number E is also in the first verse of the first chapter of the Gospel of John, and then pi is in the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1-1. But here we have it, and it demonstrates that when we speak of old, we're talking about the compound rate, the amount of, de of death that has accrued as Dr. Al Mohler struggled to communicate this or he didn't struggle, he just described it as speaking of the severity of sin and why the earth looks so old and why out in space we have so much dark matter and dark energy and dead, everything's dead and, and debris is falling through the atmosphere and everything out there is colliding and burning and uh, supernovas and black holes and all that destruction. Well, that's an accrued amount of 12.5 billion. So that means these people... Uh, thousands of years ago had knowledge of the exponential decay of the earth. And you remember Psalm 90, we learned about decay rates and how God removed 90% of the lifespan of that thousand year amount of time dying. He would die. Adam was told in the day you eat, you will die. Spiritually, he died immediately. And then within a thousand years, he died at 930 years. Methuselah lived 969, so no one lived outside those boundaries of a thousand years. And you can go to Psalm 90 and see that. So again, if this were a Bible quiz, no one could pass it because we aren't trained to look for that which is not presented to us. We're actually uh, applauded if we're old or applauded if we're young. Uh, individuals can, it's easier, the threshold of entry to participate in picking a side, and then someone to, it's called aversion therapy, where if you, let's say you pick the wrong side, someone can do this, give you a hard look, and that's that's how they do it. They, And then if you pick this one, they may shine their favor on you, and all is well, and it's great. And then, of course, if they change sides, it'll only be when there's an audience big enough to appeal to us. <laughs> But that's really not hermeneutics. That's something that anyone does out there. And of course, as the seminary I attended, I had not met a professor yet to date that is at that seminary or ever worked at that seminary that had not concurred with the fact that they could take anything out there that is in among the masses or what we would call um, commercial Christianity. They said they could take anything out there and build a better case or show more from the Bible uh, what it actually refers to or what we could actually know. And that's, of course, because they have subject matter expertise and specialized knowledge. So, again, this is how historical holistic hermeneutics helps hit unseen targets because between young and old, no one sees anything. So we were trained with what's called, rather than aver aversion therapy, we were trained in exposure therapy. Our hermeneutics professor said when we expose, posit outwardly, expositional, uh, exposit from a text that we literally like digging up something, we exhume it, expose it. Well, we were taught exposure therapy so that we wouldn't flinch or retreat from something when we began in a dialogue because in a educational environment, a learning institution like that, we are taught and trained how to participate and engage fully in collaborative reasoning, collective learning, so that the outcome will be greater than the sum of its parts. So these are parts that both belong in this about the uh, doctrine of time, for example, earth ageism, 
even the interval between Genesis 1 and 2 that's often disputed, if we notice that when that judgment occurred in Genesis 1-1, the catapultion occurred at 1,000 years per day, so that in just 12,500 years, uh, this 4.5 billion uh, compounded amount of uh, decay and the severity of sin, as Dr. Al Mohler would say, would be incurred by the earth and the universe 12.5 billion years. And of course, to God, that's just 12 and a half days. So that would be a fascinating number to evaluate as we are uh, favored and honored to do because we are uh, free to do it and encouraged. Now, I would not want to, uh, I would not have invested uh, the students, the teachers, and at the kind of seminary I attended and the kind that's still there. Uh, I wouldn't find a need to attend if all we're doing is pop picking between parts and aren't aware of the fact that that could just be a tree among a forest because in holistic hermeneutics, we're taught to see both the trees and the forest. So, um, or the forest and the trees. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson. But remember, if this were a Bible quiz, no one could answer it because no one would even know what the question is between this. What would the question be? And if someone were to ask, let's say, if I were at a coffee shop and just said, hey, what's, what's between young and old? I know we might, I've joked about Middle Earth having fun, but really it, it, it can't occur to us any more than that which we are equipped to evaluate and investigate ourselves. Otherwise, we just remain, um, well, we only remain uh, those who co-depend upon uh, pre, post, open, closed, young, old, Calvin, Luther, Arminus, Molina, Pelagius. We're at the mercy of codependency, and it would definitely not... Uh, be anything someone who's trained in hermeneutics, especially holistic, this would be, this is too fascinating uh, to abandon it for something much less. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.